And the good thing is, we might be able to talk to the guy who is your, one of your main characters, right, in your documentary. Yeah. Let's see if he's there. Yeah. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, dear, dear organizers, um, thank you very much. Dear organizers, uh, participants, friend of Ukraine, Sean, and guests, all the guests of the 70th World Berlin Film Festival, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in preparing for this address, I remembered a phrase that you are all well familiar with. Break the fourth wall. An imaginary border between the one who is on the screen and the viewer. At the same time, cinema, cinema is able to overcome other walls and barriers existing in the world, both real and ideological. It is enough to mention the story of the great German director, Wim Wenders. In my opinion, in a certain sense of the word, he broke the Berlin Wall two years before its actual fall. In the outstanding film, Der Himmel über Berlin, where the divided city is united by angels flying freely over the wall. At that time, Wenders couldn't even imagine that one day, basically the same place, he would open the 50s Berlinale, where once there was a wall and emptiness, now life is booming and the heart of the Berlinale beats. And it seems to me very symbolic. For many, many years, Potsdam Square was cut through by the Berlin Wall. Formally, it divided West and East Berlin. It divided free world and totalitarian. And it is not only about state borders on the map. The wall divided different worldviews philosophies, different values. Today, Russia wants to build the same wall in Ukraine, a wall between us, between us and Europe, to separate Ukraine from its own choice and its own future, a wall between freedom and slavery, between the right to life and missile attacks, between progress and the ruins that Russia leaves behind, a wall between civilization and tyranny. A logical question comes up. On which side should culture and art be? Are they still out of politics? Russia has been waging a full-scale war against us for, for almost a year. For almost a year, it has been shelling and destroying peaceful cities. For almost a year, it has been killing people, killing women and children, threatening the world with a nuclear attack, provoking food, energy, environmental, migration, and other crises, crises on all continents. Can art be outside of politics? Should cinema be out of politics? This is an internal question, but, but today it is, again, extremely relevant. 
I think about it when I hear strange calls for representatives of Russian sports, read about strange invitations to perform for Russian musicians, discussions about scientists, cinema and culture in general. And I was thinking about this last night when Russia launched yet another massive missile attack on Ukraine. 36 rockets and Iranian drones. Culture and cinema can be outside of politics, but not when it is a policy of aggression. Not when it is a policy of mass crimes, murders, terror, the desire to destroy other countries and other peoples, when it is a policy of total war. That is the politics of today's Russia. Under such circumstances and at such times, art cannot be neutral, cannot be out. Culture makes choices in times like this. Culture chooses the side or, or speaks out in different ways, fighting and, and standing against the evil or overlooks and remains silent and in fact helping the evil when art is indifferent and its voice is not heard in this silence the loudspeakers of evil sound stronger and more convincingly of course in the global sense cinema cannot cannot change the world but but it can influence and inspire people who can change the world a good movie evokes emotions. Cult cinema causes change. In humanity's struggle against any evil, there are always two voices, truth and propaganda. For a while, propaganda can muzzle the truth, but it is not able to win completely. If art doesn't stop the struggle and understand that Standing aside means being close to evil. The Berlinale made its choice and confirmed the truth of my statement, professing the principles of openness, equality, dialogue without borders and the cinema from all over the world. The Berlinale made a choice. Institutions and persons supporting the Kremlin and films made with Russia's support are not admitted to this year's festival. We appreciate, we appreciate it and are grateful for it. This is really important. This is not formality, this is justice. And we are grateful for Ukraine's support, attention to Ukraine, solidarity with Ukraine. Proof of this is the official badge for participants and guests of the Berlinale. The Golden Bear, which this year has, has become blue and yellow. These are the colors of Ukraine. And we will do everything to return him to his rightful place and free all our lands. Your support in this is important and, and inviolable to us. Now, there are thousands of kilometers between us, but we are side by side. We speak different languages, but there is complete understanding between us. Only a virtual border separates us, but there is no wall, no wall between us. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, in 1951, the first Berlin Film Festival took place. You all know the slogan and purpose of the first Berlin Alem. This is the showcase of the free world. Today, Ukraine is the fortress of the free world. A fortress that has stood for almost a year. A fortress that protects itself Europe and the world, a fortress that cannot fall, a fortress 
that will definitely stand and will win. I know and I believe that you will all be convinced of this after seeing our superpower, the superpower of Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you. President of Ukraine, Mr. Volodymyr Zelensky. Thank you so much for taking the time.